Hello, my name is Melanie and on my channel, Our Tropical Soil, you can learn more about growing food in the tropics. I first learned gardening through permaculture, which is where you are very resourceful and use things around you to increase the fertility in your soil instead of buying outside things to come and bring into your garden to increase the soil. So I love this concept of just working with what you have and that was what really inspired me to get into gardening because I saw how simple it could be. I learned Hugo culture when I was learning about permaculture because Hugo culture falls under the permaculture principles and concepts and practices. So basically, if you don't know what it is, it's when you use organic material, primarily logs, to make a bed. So the original method is where you get like logs, big logs that are decaying or like sticks and you lay them on the ground or dig a trench and put them in there and then you add other things like compost manure um, grass clippings leaves and at the end you top it off with soil and then you plant in that and then over time everything will go slowly decomposing especially the logs and you'll get um, fertilization in your bed over a very long period of time like a slow release fertilizer and at the end you end up with like this big hill like that and then you plant like on the sides and on the top of the hill so i didn't really want to make a hill like that but i have seen people do it in raised beds so you just build your raised bed and instead of filling it all the way with soil you fill maybe like half of it with wood and grass and sticks and leaves and all that and then you top it off with compost and soil on the top that's ready to plant in so the Hugo culture bed works well because everything's decomposing over time slowly. So it releases nutrients slowly over time. And it also holds in a lot of water from all that decaying wood. So you have to water your plants less. So I had concrete blocks arranged in a square and I had a compost bin where I was throwing in like the kitchen scraps and some leaves and stuff. And I decided I want to use the concrete blocks to make a raised bed when I had the food forest. So I took out the concrete blocks and I moved out the compost and in the same place I rearranged them to make a raised bed and then I added some logs that I had about this big and I added um, some sticks and leaves and stuff and the logs weren't um, long they were like sliced so they were like this and then like about that thick and then I placed them on the bottom and I finished it off with soil and I planted some things in there. So during the time that I had that raised Hugo culture bed, I had no idea that there was a problem with it until I started removing it all when I decided to take out the food forest. So before I even started gardening in that area, there was the soursop tree that I had and it's next to this old fence. And there was carpenter ants coming from the fence and farming aphids on the soursop tree. And it was really out of control. So the aphids, um, they like attach to the new growth of the plants and they suck out like the sap from the plants. And then they produce honeydew in the process. So the ants eat the honeydew and the honeydew also promotes a fungal growth called sooty mold on the leaves, which affects the photosynthesis of the plant. So the ants like actually form the aphids. They go and they introduce the aphids to new places of the plants. They protect, protect the aphids from predators. And basically you might have a few aphids, but if the ants get a hold of them, it'll just like go out of control. Whereas if the aphids were by themselves, they can't really like grow and create such a huge population all on their own. Before I started gardening there, the ants were living in the old fence. They're carpenter ants. The carpenter ants don't eat the wood. So they make tunnels in the wood and they live in there. And I've also seen them make tunnels through the ground where like um, if I was like moving the mulch or something, they all like scattered and went into their little tunnels in the ground. And I'm guessing that connects to the wood. We were mainly controlling our aphids by getting a hose and just spraying all the tips of the branches. And that worked because it would basically kill all of the aphids and the population had to regrow from the beginning. But with the help of the ants, it was able to regrow 
relatively quickly. When I took out the food forest, I took out the raised bed and I'm really glad that I did. So I started taking apart the concrete blocks and towards the back of the bed near the fence, thousands of ants were coming out, like so many ants. They were all living in some of the logs, the bigger round ones that were there and they were just going crazy everywhere. It was a huge, huge, huge nest. And I'm guessing that they need um, thicker wood to maybe make their tunnels properly. So they're probably living in the fence where the wood is the thickest. And so if you got, give them these logs that are like that big, they can, they can really like go in there and make a good size nest. And then with this really big nest, they were able to have a huge population. And with more ants, they were able to farm more aphids. And then they started moving to other places that wasn't the soursop and taking the aphids to those plants. So it was just, it was getting really out of control. Besides the aphids in the wood that I had in the Hugo culture raised bed, there was also these big pieces of soft wood that I had in the paths where I was removing them and they were just breaking apart. The wood was really soft and ants were coming out of them too. So they were basically focusing on softwood areas. I had hardwood logs also, and those were not affected. And I think that's primarily because the softwood decomposes faster. I think over time, once the hardwood decomposes and it's a lot softer, then the ants will be able to make nests in there too. But the softwood is the first one that they're gonna be making nests in. So I got rid of all the softwood in my garden. It was just after a year or two, just completely breaking apart in my hands. It was really easy to break apart. So we put it outside the garden and I got rid of all the soft wood and I'm not going to be using soft wood like anytime soon in the garden because the carpenter ants just completely get out of control when you give them that soft wood. Soft wood decays a lot faster than hardwood so a lot of times I've seen that people recommend it for the Hugo culture beds and it makes sense because it's it'll decompose faster, retain that water and add nutrients to the soil much quicker but at the same time it will decompose faster and become really soft where the ants can make tunnels in them and you give them like a perfect home for the ants. If you have problems with carpenter ants already as it is, I really would not recommend doing a Hugo culture bed whatsoever because from what I understand, once the hardwood gets soft, the ants would be able to make nests in that hardwood also, not just softwood. So either way, each wood is gonna be problematic when you make a hugo culture bed over time it's just the softwood will give you problems earlier on when you have the carpenter ants present so i hope this video helped you decide whether you want to make a hugo culture bed or not another thing to remember is that maybe you don't want to make it very near your house at all because if a nest does develop there you don't want the ants getting in your house and eating the wood in your house and you also need to consider that if you do have these carpenter ants then a lot of times they're going to be farming those aphids and eating honeydew and they're probably going to be your garden plants because it's just closer in proximity. So that's another thing to consider before making a Hugo culture bed, whether it's a mound or the raised bed. Adding nutrition to your soil doesn't need to be done in this Hugo culture method. There's other methods also. This one is a good method and it works for a lot of people, but it's just not working here because the aphids and the ants are out of control with these rotting logs. So another way that you can add nutrition to your soil is by doing it from above and layering it with wood chips and leaves and other garden waste. And then you're constantly building the soil. And every time it rains, all that leachate is from the decomposing mulch on top is going to come down and give nutrients to your plants every time it rains. So to add the nutrients from above, I decided to get mulch and I added mulch everywhere. I have a whole video about the mulch and I'm gonna link it over here. And that way you guys can watch it and see what I'm doing all over the property with the mulch. If you like this video, hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos.